Well, today, we're working on the 97XJ. I've had an issue um, that I came across probably much sooner than I thought, and I just didn't know what it was, and that was leaky transmission lines. Um, I guess initially when I noticed this issue, it was my oil filter. Uh, it's blue right now. That one. Every time I change it out, it was uh, just full of oil and dirt. And as it later turns out, when I finally got stuck in a mountain, my Jeep wasn't moving forward in reverse. Well, you know, I had low tranny oil and I noticed that my lines have been pinched and were squirting out the oil every time I use it. And uh, well, that's why my oil filter was always super gunky when I was trying to replace it. Uh, let me show you what I'm talking about. So now that we're under the Jeep, this is one of them. Two of them run right by here on the side of the transmission. And what ends up happening is if your suspension is tired enough, this control arm bracket moves up every time you hit a bump and eventually can smash your transmission line. And I'm not sure you guys are able to catch this on the video, but you know, the transmission kind of takes a hit there at the very edge of the I'm sorry, it's not the, the transmission, it's the oil pan on the motor. Um, it, it takes a good hit there and on the on the edge of it. So um, I try to fix the problem by simply uh, cutting the lines and I put these uh, you know hoses that are for gasoline and I pinch them up and you know what I took a cruise or two but I had not really fixed the problem, so I would keep keep ripping those lines. Ultimately, I fixed the problem, replaced my coil springs, replaced my shocks, and now... Daddy, what well, are you doing? Well, I'm trying to show a video here of how Daddy's working on the Jeep. All right there. So now, now that I replaced those, I actually bought all the trans transmission lines that I need, but um, uh, they only had two. I need I need one more, and so let me show you what I'm talking about. There are two lines that come out of your transmission. This one, and there's one missing right, oh, let me see if I can catch, right about here. That's the one I unplugged. That's the one I'm currently replacing. So it's that one right there and this one they're pretty easy to remove from this side you kind of pinch these this pin push the line in and then pull it all out with this plastic pin also those two lead up front over there so these transmission lines lead up here to the front and they come here to the radiator, one up on top and one at the bottom. Now, the reason why I am replacing three lines, well, it's two coming from the transmission, and then right around here begins the third one, which comes up here to the top, right there. That one, when I had a hole on my radiator, uh, it ended up getting kind of stuck, and so I was as I was twisting that off, I didn't notice I was twisting the transmission line. So I ended up cutting it and putting another piece of uh, gasoline uh, line in there, and that was actually holding pretty good. So I just bought it, well, because it was like ten bucks. So now the problem: I have removed the one, the transmission line that goes from the bottom. All right, I just simply loosened it with some pliers and I pulled it out. And the issue is that the new transmission line comes up to here. So you're supposed to reuse this part, which connects to the 
radiator. But this clamp here doesn't release as good as or as easy as the other ones did right under the transmission or on the side of it. So a tip that I heard about is using a Sharpie cap. So cutting off the clip, cutting off one end, inserting in there. And so let's see how this works. The Sharpie has been pretty used up in construction to work already. So I'm not too, too sad about letting it dry. All right, I'm gonna see if recording this is not a waste of time for you guys. So I'm gonna, I'm taking a, I'm running a Laja Shirraquera blade. Oh, that broke off pretty quick. All right, and I'm gonna kind of slice it down half ways. Oh man, I guess this cap is pretty dry. Oh, it already sliced all the way. So the idea was cut off the cap and then um, sort of slice it down the middle so that I can slide it on the line. All right, so I am shoving the Sharpie cap in there as best as I can. You guys hopefully can see this. Let that zoom. All right. I feel like I need a little bit more help here. What little help here? I'm going to use this wrench to sort of help me apply some pressure down. I'm going to pull it out. And there she goes. So the plastic clip ends up staying in there. All right, so one thing, um, I'm curious as to why the original line, uh, sorry, let's try to get a little bit better lighting. I'm curious as to why the original line comes with this fitting and then once I took that off, there's really nothing inside. And if you check out the new one, it doesn't come with that fitting, um, but it, it does have clips inside. Let me see if I can focus on those. You see those? It's got at least four of those in there. And so my plan was to take the clip off of the old one and put it on there. But the old one doesn't look like it has clips at all. So I'm just going to insert it in there. See how that goes. And uh, sure enough, once you insert your fitting into the new AutoZone branded uh, hose, it's a perfect fit, you know. That's nice. I'm going to clean this tip up and then get under the Jeep. All right, another thing that needs to be mentioned on the other end, uh, this end, which is the one that goes... On the side of the transmission, that's how it looks new, okay? And this is the one that I took off the Jeep right here. And so it's sort of, this plastic clip is sort of hooked on a little ridge there. So I'm going to use a little pick tool to uh, pull this off. And also when I pulled this out, this little ring came out, right, and this ring goes right up in there to to sort of help, I guess, you know, this is part of the process of when you push the line in, this ring will sort of, you know, kind of help you out there with the clip. And as you pop it out, uh, just make sure you're looking out for these two parts. Okay, mine piped right out. I got really lucky. I didn't have to search for it. So I'm going to use a little pick tool to remove this clip and, uh, and just make sure I put this part back on uh, the new line. 
I forget, sometimes I get annoyed when I see uh, the video, the end product, and not how it was looking as a person was working on it. I'm just having a hard time getting good lighting. Let's see if I go here to where the sun is hitting my hands. Okay, so just simply using this little pick tool to pick up these tabs and sort of run them over the little ridge. Already did this side, so I got I did that side. Pulling it out. Here it is. I'll turn this phone around. And uh, well here's a new line. And so I'm gonna slip this in. Let me see if it pops in or if I need to use a pick tool. No, it pops in. Awesome. And then this end, this fitting goes right up in there. Awesome. So I'm gonna get under the Jeep, pop this part in. Once I've threaded this line under the Jeep, and then I'll screw that other end, which is too blurry to see. All right, I've threaded the line from here all the way lean towards the back of the Jeep. I forgot to mention up here I disconnected the fan and uh, without moving the radiator I kind of maneuvered it sideways forward and back and up and down and I pulled it out so that I can expose that bottom line right away without having to get into much 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 work um, this line is also exposed from the underside of my Jeep and you can see it right in that that opening it just wasn't enough for me to try to get a wrench through here so that's how I find myself um, removing the the electric fan all right, let me see if I can get a good angle so I can uh, show you guys how that just threads in. All right, so here's the opening. I'm just kind of make sure I get the line in. And uh, it's very re difficult to try to turn this with one hand, but you see that already got it started with my left hand. So uh, I'm going to sort of stop recording here and show you when it's already nice and tight. All right, so I guess here comes a little bit of advice. I got to make this end fit. Uh, let me see if I can point it well right there. You, you ever see that? up there and I'm having a bit of trouble because it seems like this line is is too long so I keep trying to push it threading it through the Jeep that way to try to make it line up with where it's supposed to um, and it's not that it's too long it's just I guess it'll be easier if you clip this end first and then screw in the part in the front so there you go, probably something that will help you out and it's going to cost me a couple of minutes. I hope it doesn't come down to me having to unscrew that end already screwed up all the way over there to insert this end and then redo that other end all the way at the radiator. All right. Well, finally got that part in. It did take me a while. And essentially what I ended up doing is just sort of uh, bending the line to sort of help me out. I'm not sure if, uh, you know, there there's just a couple of differences uh, in, you know, in, in, in the line. Of course, it's not a, the original brand. It's a Duraless brand. So there might be some discrepancies in the... And the angles that they made some of the line, uh, some of the turns on the line, but essentially it's in. Now I'm just going to tighten all the uh, 
size eight millimeter bolts or five sixteens that kind of hold the line in place up there in the front. Um, you'll see it when you try to remove the line that you'll have at least three of those screws to, to sort of kind of put back. And they actually do hold the lines up as close as possible to the body. Um, so, you know, don't forget to put those back on. All right. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I know the video is annoying, but I'm not really good at recording. I'm just kind of do it good at working on my cars. So see you guys until the next time.